Hello everyone and welcome um, to our Furniture Painters Unite member spotlight interviews and next up is the wonderful, talented and a good friend of mine and an all-round amazing woman um, and you're going to get lots of inspiration from her. It is Michelle from Mint by Michelle. Hi Michelle. Hello my gorgeous. Thanks for agreeing no. to do this. Oh, thank you for asking me. Thank well, you for I'm asking me. It's very exciting. Well, I'm a big fan, fan girl of yours. Um, as I was telling you earlier, I went back through all your posts to find out when I first started following you, and it was over two years ago. And um, so I know a lot about you, but there are people watching this who might not know a lot. Who? Who <laughs> <No>. doesn't know? <laughs> Somebody who was um, living on Venus for a while, or um, they must have been. Maybe uh, too much over COVID. We're <laughs> 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 not now after lockdown. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you've been fangirling because I fangirl over you, you know. You know I love you. And uh, and thank you for, um, yeah, thank you for asking me to be interviewed. It's very nice. As I said to you, I thought um, you are being super professional, which is very impressive. And uh, I thought it was tomorrow night, as I said, and I was laying on the couch. And I had to quickly get up and put my lipstick on. So... <laughs> Well, your but I'm all good. Your red lipstick is your trademark, so you have to have the red lipstick on. It is true. And sometimes I get on and do the lives and things and I don't have the red lipstick. And people go, where's your red lipstick? You need to put your red lipstick. I go, okay. I wear my red lipstick. <laughs> While I'm sleeping, even. <laughs> you just wake up fine. really. <laughs> That's right. Just in case. You never know. Well, um, so you're, you're based in Australia. So tell everyone... Um, how you, well, when you got started, you're at this a while now. So I got started about five and a half years ago. So five and a half years ago, I left my job. I decided that I was going to try to see whether I could turn this hobby of mine, this furniture painting hobby, into a business. I understand that most people, when they do that, are quite sensible. And they start doing it on the side first and sell things and then they build up to it, et cetera, and then they leave their job, et cetera. My personality dictates that I must jump in with two feet and uh, see if I can swim. That's how I best operate. So I quit my job, my full-time government job and a very secure job, and um, I started doing it. And because I absolutely then desperately needed to make money mm -hmm. uh straight away because i didn't have the income then uh i was really quite crazed about it do you know what i mean so i was really 100 yeah. percent gung-ho for i mean for years actually <laughs> but um maybe still but, a bit like that <laughs> hey you may be still a little bit like that <laughs> yeah i know look at it, it is a bit like that. and uh and yeah. it was very much like that in the beginning and um anyway so i just started in my garage then like most people do so i started yeah. in my garage and and then within a few months i think in my garage i had to move out because furniture was overflowing and into every single crevice in the house and we couldn't move and I remember just absolutely losing the pot one day because I couldn't get around to turn the TV on because there was so much furniture in the way. And I thought, right, we need to move out of here. So I got a workshop and uh, it all went from there. Brilliant. Well, my first my first encounter with you um, was you did a radiogram or sideboard and you, it, was, it was decoupaged, but it was like no decoupage I'd ever seen. I actually thought you had hand painted this whole, and it wasn't a transfer. It was so different. And I, I messaged and I said, "What? What? What is that? Did you? That's amazing." And you said, "No, that's decoupage." And I thought, "Wow, that you just catapulted decoupage, which before that was napkins, flurry napkins." Yeah, really. nice. <laughs> it is not my thing, as you know. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful though it can be. Yes. Yeah, I think that's what I was using. And you catapulted, catapulted it into the mainstream. And now everywhere you go, every every furniture painter, it's all decoupage, decoupage, decoupage. So it was just, I think, 
um, I think it was a notch. I think you had to bring out your own line of decoupage papers. I I absolutely agree with you. And I think um, for the first few years, so I always, um, I'll tell you what was, I'll tell you probably what was made the difference for me. In the first two years of the business, even though I did have a Facebook page, for example, um, I actually was not involved in the industry, if you know what I mean. So yeah. I didn't even know there were any groups. I didn't know that there was a whole big yeah. chalk painting industry. I didn't pay attention to um, anything or anyone. I was totally oblivious, just in my own little world. And I think because I was in my own little world, I really did kind of go on my own journey with yeah. no influence from anybody because I didn't know who anyone was. I didn't look. I just did my own thing. Yeah. And so I really gravitated towards decoupage in particular. And from the very beginning when I was doing decoupage, I I was having it, um, I had everything custom printed so I discovered that I could have things custom printed. And then over the years, I started trialing different papers and different sort of mediums and um, to see what worked best and what I liked best, et cetera. And, and obviously, like it wasn't obvious to me in the beginning, but over, you know, the sort of two or three years, it became very apparent. You know, I woke up one day and went, oh, why don't I have my own decoupage line? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think I had stumbled across, yeah. like, an amazing paper that hadn't been used and just uh, just um, a particular way of printing that made them quite special and yeah. I knew that there was nothing quite like that on the market and yeah. blah, 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 hang out with decoupage papers. And the size of them for the yes. for, for your furniture plus yeah. the the what the stuff you got before your papers um always had always arrived with a tooth in, or the ink there was always bits of ink missing where the folds were. That's when it mm. using until yours came out, and then it just revolutionised. I think the whole industry, and now every single brand has their line of decoupage papers. Every brand, yeah. um, but definitely you definitely um revolutionised decoupage from napkins. <laughs> From thank, you. <laughs> thank you. You know, it's funny. I have it's a couple. Not, um, when you don't, you're not doing something intentionally. Do you know what I mean? And so, it just felt like a natural evolution for me to do that because that's what I personally was doing anyway. So, like to do like the A1 sizes, etc. That's how I used to print things. I would print them so they fit the piece. So I'd print them for furniture and um so <coughs> it didn't seem like such a big thing because I was doing it anyway and uh but then obviously I did realize very quickly that it did seem to almost overnight as you say kind of revolutionize the industry in terms yeah. of decoupage and you know as you say now every brand's got decoupage every brand's got you know a1s all you know larger decoupage and and I just think that's brilliant like I love love looking around and seeing all because I love decoupage and I love pieces that look like their artworks and um you know funky artworks or traditional or whatever it is and so you know I love it I love what it's done yeah. for the industry yeah. Yeah, it's, it's well, it's very quickly, very, I think very quickly after you launched your decoupage papers, um, I got the first, I got mine from Hillary and Alice. Um, yes. That, like, that, that was, was one of our first dockers. That was, so, a, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I just loved it. I just fell in love with them. And um, you've made it affordable and you've made it easy. You know, every everyone, I think before that people were afraid saying oh decoupage oh I don't know how to do that I don't but you mm. know, one affordable and two very easy to learn with all your tutorials and now your Facebook page has went nuclear your following has went it just keeps growing and growing and one of your one of my favorite posts of yours is your bedside cabinets which I know you kept oh I love that. that was one of my favorite videos and it had over one million views didn't it 
It did. So that was the first time one of my videos went viral. Like that However, cool. I do want to say this, that, <laughs> that <laughs> video started going viral. I love those bedside tables and yeah. I've got them in my bedroom. And um, But the video, you know, you can tell sort of where the video is landing across the world from, you know, all of the different languages that are coming up. Do you know what yeah. I mean? What I what I discovered was that as soon as that seemed to land in like Spain and Portugal, people actually were not really fangirling about those oh. bedside tables. And in fact, a lot <laughs> a lot of the comments on that were really awful. Were really like, "That's awful," and you should burn those. So I didn't read, didn't read the million the million comments. <laughs> So I would just read the comments like laughing my head off, but just thinking, you know, jokes on you because it's just gone to one and a half million views. So whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I could care less. And um anyway, that did make me laugh. But then I did have another one more recently that went over two million views, which was like what unbelievable. Was that? That's which one was that? That was was that the one I did the Karen Oh my god, I can't even remember. Um, the cityscape painting? No, I love that one. No, well. I think it was the uh, Karen's Technicolor bouquet. It was the start of the painting for that. You know, oh, yeah. I came out with a new decoupage paper, and it was the first part of the painting of that, and it went over to me in views. And I could barely even understand why it went so viral. But um, the comments were much more complimentary on that one, so that was nice. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Badger. 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 <laughs> I know. You know, I still get comments every now and then on those bedside tables and it'll come up and it'll be like gifts that'll be like, do you know what I mean, or something. It's just people absolutely hating on it. Well, <laughs> well, that's, um, that's the thing about art, isn't it? Art is It's very one. subjective. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very uh, everything. I, my kids are doing art, and they say, "Well, it's not good enough to show my teacher." And I say, "There is no bad, and there is no good in art." Okay. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Someone's gonna love it. Someone's, Someone's gonna hate it. it. Yes, that's how it is. Just, just throw it out there. Um. So then you went on after so the decoupage papers and how many stockists? Like you've stockists everywhere. So, so I think we've got um. We've got about 350 stockers now yes. around the world for um, the decor. I know, that's crazy, isn't it? Even for me, I go, what? That's crazy. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, it's 350 stockers and it, like, it does blow my mind, but I have to say it kind of never really sinks in, if you know what I mean, because I still go to work every day. Yeah. I still go to work in the same place. I still do the same thing. So it's it's almost an abstract kind of concept um, that I don't think really sinks in. I think you, you still go and you, you know, it's yeah. like I'm still working in my garage. That's honestly what it feels like. Yeah. But you're not. <laughs> but I'm not. No, but I'm not. Yeah, then yeah. you release really, your own brushes, your own paintbrushes. Yes, did um, the old paintbrushes. Which I'm very jealous of, very jealous of. I would love to do something like that because sometimes... You should do brushes. Everybody should do brushes. Everybody should do a brush. <laughs> brush. Everyone should have their own brush, I reckon. Um, and that, that was great. And then you went on to do a collaboration. So you started doing collaborations um, and videos with other artists and mm -hmm. other companies. Other companies um, and I saw you doing... Um, decoupage you used one of Sally Joe from Push Talk you used one of her papers and she used one of your papers in a collaboration mm. and then that resulted in um you doing a collaboration with a I'm calling it a one so artists first yeah and using your own line of transfers furniture transfers as well which some people might not know that a one is actually you that's true so interestingly I was actually introduced, so, you know, it's quite a small sort of, it's a big industry, but it's sort of small in that everybody kind of knows everyone. You know exactly what yeah. I mean. So everyone sort of knows everybody. 
And it was actually Solly Joe, who I'm very good friends with. Um, it's an interesting industry like that because. You know, I've never met you and I've never met Solly Joe in person or Josie in person or so many people in person, but I would I would think of them as friends. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because we chat and we, you know, all those things. So that's also what I find is um, it's very supportive. When I was, yes, I did an interview very, very supportive. Yeah, with Quita Allen from All Shabbed Out. And then I also yeah. did an interview with Dionne Woods from the Turquoise Aris. Now, they've been in a long time and they both said that, Years ago, you didn't have this support network. Um, we're mm. videos for Furniture Painters Unite because it was created by Emma McGeorge from Rustic Sishik to have a community of support because um, we're all very, very alone. When you started in your garage, you were mm. alone. When you started your business, you were alone. Yes, um, you have to push yourself and yeah, do it yeah. all yourself. You're so by yourself. Yeah, she decided to start the Unite Groups as an, a network of support. But Dion, mm. Dion and Quita said, you know, years ago, year, like when they started 12 years ago, um, it wasn't like that. And if they asked somebody, oh, how did you do that or what did you use? They never got an answer and they never got mm. But I think it's the, the opposite now. Now everyone realises it's not a competition. Um, it's and, and you get more satisfaction and more happiness if you approach it as a community and as to support each other. And when I saw you doing yeah. that collaboration, um, that, to me, that's just what it was. It was two amazing women. You are amazing. Sally Jo is amazing. You've both done amazing things within the industry. And there are the two of you were on the same screen promoting each other's products, which is, which is fantastic. Yeah, look, I really... I really love Solly Joe for that. And so, look, I will say, you know, um, this industry is like any other industry. Do you know what I mean? So there's really good bits and there's not so great bits. And um, I think if you, if you kind of conduct yourself the way that you hope uh, people will conduct themselves with you or the way you hope the yeah. industry will be, then I think you'll you'll always be okay. And the people that you gravitate to and who gravitate toward you are the ones who will be very supportive. Um, but you need to put that out too. So if you're very supportive, genuinely supportive yeah. of people, genuinely, genuinely want to lift people up and see people succeed, even if they're succeeding when you're not, um, I think that you're always going to have a good experience. So yeah. people like Solly Joe, I absolutely love. And, you know, we still talk. I just talked to her the other day and, um, you know, I love what she's doing with her business and I hear about her business and I think it's amazing and she thinks this is amazing. And, and actually she's the one who introduced me to the girls from Grace on Design Um who I then became very friendly with and who we then did the A1 transfers together. And I felt like that was a really important uh, statement to go, you can, I mean, they've got a decoupage line, like Solly mm -hmm. Joe's got a decoupage line and I've got a decoupage line. And that at the time was, you know, that was my primary business. And you don't have to compete you can be in the same area and still be supportive and hope. I hope other people, people succeed. Do you know what I mean? I yeah, hope people do well. Enough, there's enough customers for everyone. Exactly. So, there's a whole globe of customers. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, so I think you're exactly right. You get back what you put out. I do, I do believe that. Yeah. Um, um, and it's just – and also the industry. I went to the furniture first – Furniture Painters Business. I would have company. loved to go to that. It looks so good. I had, I had such a good time. Uh, I have a good time when I go to the dump. Like, I just have to. No. <laughs> but what I so me. want to go out with you. <laughs> what struck me about that, um, <laughs> it was just outside London, and it was everyone in it had a furniture painting business, and they were all at different stages. Some were just starting out. Some had been in a long time. But what struck me when I entered the, the room for the first time was 99% of the people in the room were women. And it's the yeah. only industry, I think, in the world that can say 99% of 
the late the leaders and mm. the ones that do really well are are female and um and I love that and people don't really yeah. stop about that because it is the only industry um and I think um I've made some God, I've made such some, some really good friends um yeah. doing it and I just love doing it and I do love the industry so um I appreciate what you're saying about uh we but what to give put out what to give back and by collaboration and about supporting each other because that's what it's all about and if it's not about that then it's uh what, what is it about you know exactly a sad little world you know what i mean like you know mon money's nice but at the end of the day i mean you need to be happy and um you want to be in a nice environment you don't want to be living you know in that cutthroat yeah. world all the time you know i would consider oh, some of some of creators. um as creative hey. as creative people as well it, uh, sometimes mm. it, doesn't, well, it doesn't sit right with me you know i'm, I'm more creative or more than that i can't be cut throat i suppose some people can but it's just mm. not yeah, it's like you know i just uh, i'm sure we'll get to it but um just for example um i've just you know i've just released the paints like literally yesterday, I, I know we'll get to that, but <laughs> literally yesterday, but we're kind of on the topic. But, you know, like um, company owners from, you know, other paint companies were congratulating me. And you go, you know, like that's beautiful. And I know uh, on my live or whatever, you know, Natasha from Apocathery, you know, got on there and said, um, you know, congratulations and, you know, we're so excited for you or whatever and, and, you know, I see their stuff and their paints and I think, oh, they're beautiful and that works amazing. And I don't know why you can't be like that. Like, why can't we all fangirl about each other? Like, they're all, yeah. you know, amazing people. You know what it takes to do it. And I think when someone else, you know, does that, I think that's um, amazing. So. Yeah. so just you've just mentioned the paints. <laughs> yes, I know. So you said yes, two days ago you released your own line of mineral paints. So yes. I, know, I know you use Annie Sloan chalk paint, and mm -hmm. of course, because it is fantastic. And yes. your mineral paints now, I was excited for these to come, and you, like you didn't disappoint, you stayed true to yourself because they are bright, bold, beautiful, the hues. Uh, like the, there was uh there's i can't remember the name of it the blue one the blue one you were you were going to use last night but you didn't what's that one is it a blue oh uh, not the roaring 20s that one yeah the hue the deepness of that's beautiful yeah, yeah thank but you i love i love your brights and when you mentioned um daydream apothecary apothecary mm. every time they say that it changes apothecary apothecary <laughs> Apothecary, yeah, um, because because there are paints I've just got their neons in that I'm I'm experimenting with, and again the bright the brightness is is just mm. so I love they look amazing. I love the look of their paints. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm doing what I'm working with them at the minute. So well, there you go. Good. Just you know, keep checking my page. And um, so <laughs> so I'm really really glad that you did not play it safe. You could have played it safe, and you could have went with greys and whites and dark. You know, you just could have played it safe. But mm. I'm really happy that you haven't, and that you've released the most amazing bright. Um, colors and yeah okay so i can't wait i, I can't wait to get my hands on that. Um, thank you you know i think it's really important it's like with the um the images that i release for the decoupage papers i think it's really important to um stay true to yourself because i think you need to be able to you have to believe in what you're producing and you can't be doing things you know, you can't create things thinking about what other people want. I think that's a mistake. So I think you have to go, right, I have to be true to myself and I have to, um, it has to be on brand. But the brand is you. Do you know what yes. I mean? Yes. So, and I think I've managed to, I'm really so thrilled with the colours and the range and the paints themselves. I'm the labeling and the, I'm just so thrilled with the whole thing. It's um, it's very exciting because I think, as I said on my live yesterday when I did the release, I can remember four years ago 
being in the old workshop and um, talking to Casey, who was my first ever employee, and he's still an employee, and um, and saying, oh, I just would love to release my own paints. Like, that would be amazing. And four years later, here we go. I'm done. No, it. Awesome. So. no well, no, um, honestly, well done. Um, yeah, everyone was – well, I was waiting with everyone. I was waiting on them, and um, I'm delighted. I'm absolutely delighted to see them. And so tell everyone – because I know people when watching this will be asking where where they can get the paints, when they can get the paints. Yeah. Because um, that was my first that was my first thought. When can I have them? Well, you can have them from now. Absolutely. You can. We are shipping globally, so uh, people can purchase directly from us. We do have at the moment. So, like I said, we just released literally a day ago. Um, so, and we're just before Christmas. So I think we've got four stockers in the U S we've got, um, a few in, well, one or two in Europe and UK and Ireland that we're still kind of working with yeah. and, um, to get officially on board. But I think, I think my goal was. I, I thought I'll be really happy. So you have to start with small goals. This is the thing. So, like, um, you know, and I say we've got 350 stockers of the decoupage papers. It's like, you know, that's great or whatever. But when I was coming out with the paint, I honestly was thinking if I can release, by the time we release, if I can have 10 stockers of paint, I will be absolutely thrilled really really thrilled and uh i had exactly 10 stockers on <laughs> the day of release which was like amazing and yeah. um and now you know it'll it'll grow and it'll do its thing and you know be whatever it's going to be but for anyway so you can purchase from us and you know if you're in the u.s there's a few stockers you can look on our stockers locator on the website right, okay. and you can search under mineral paint and all the mineral paint stockers will come up fabulous so, Fabulous. Well, congrats. I'm going to let you go. I've been talking to you. Thank for you. Um, so thank you so much for doing this. And um, I hope Thanks so much who, for having me. I hope everyone who watches it um, gets some inspiration and knows that everyone started Everyone started somewhere. And I think I think the... Everyone started, started in the garage. Started in their houses. Everyone. Yeah. And you're such yep. an inspiration. And um, I wish you all the best. Thank all you. Your paints and your brushes, and um, just keep releasing, keep releasing them papers every time. You say, You're a legend. Thank you so time, much for having me. Every time you say there's going to be a new release, I don't know how many messages go in my inbox. When's a new release? What are they like? Are we getting them? <laughs> yes, I'm getting them. Yes, I'm them. I'll yes. have to shoot you a paint. I'll shoot you some paint for you to have a play with. Ooh. Don't tell anyone. Not tell anyone. <laughs> nobody, nobody heard that. All right, so no, no, no. Much. I'll let you get to bed because it's late. It's late for you and it's early for me. And have yeah. a great Christmas. Thank you. I will. You too. I'll talk to you anyway. Yeah. But yes, thank you. And uh, thank you. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Bye.